please be advised. This video features content that discusses and depicts sensitive subjects like racial discrimination, domestic violence, and rape. Whoa, this is heavy. Wow, times have really changed, haven't they? I always respect you. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie tropes and trends that would not fly today. But we raised you like you were one of us. You mean I'm gonna stay this color? For this list, we're looking at previously common plot elements, practices, devices, or cliches in filmmaking that would most likely not be used today. <laughs> either because of changes in what is considered acceptable by modern standards, or changes in the film industry itself. Chicken, Mr. Morehouse? To be clear, we're not saying these tropes, fads, or types of behavior don't still happen in films today, but they're usually handled far differently. How can I sell an infomercial about fat kids who can't keep their piggy little snouts shut? Hmm? We're also not saying that movies with such content are bad. In fact, many of them are classics. But we just can't ignore some of the things that are featured in them. <laughs> Dong has only been in our country a short time, Fred. I think we could all help him assimilate. Number 10. Everyone smokes. So this is Johnny Farrell. I've heard a lot about you, Johnny Farrell. Nowadays, the Motion Picture Association of America takes smoking into account when rating a film. But that wasn't always the case. I just paid out 20 and I'd like to get it back. In fact, back in the day, it would be common to see characters smoking like chimneys, even in children's films. Stars such as Rita Hayworth, Humphrey Bogart, and Marlena Dietrich were often seen puffing away in some of their most famous roles. The media's relationship with cigarettes has drastically evolved throughout the years, with new laws being created in regard to cigarette ads as well. Thank you, Rob Reiner. We're going to use these children to bring the tobacco company down. Number nine, violent PG movies. <laughs> Unlike other entries on this list, this alteration was due to a change in industry standards. Before 1984, there was no PG-13 rating, so there was nothing to bridge the gap between PG and R-rated films. This had been controversial for some time, but it was the violence in PG-rated films like Gremlins, Jaws, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Poltergeist that caused the MPAA to reconsider their system. And we can see why. <coughs> Jaws had the same rating as Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That just doesn't sound right. Where are we? Number 8. Casual Attitudes Towards Bullying What, are you gonna cry now? Come on, cry, baby, cry for me. Bullies may be the villains of some classic kids' movies, but why the hell do the parents or teachers never seem to care about what's going on? Don't you know how to knock Flemwad? Take Heavyweights, for example, where Ben Stiller's character forces his campers to lose weight and mocks them for their size. That's right, a wacky comedy about child abuse. <laughs> well, well. Looks like London Bridge is falling down, huh? While most bullies got their comeuppance by the end, it usually wasn't thanks to an authority figure. <laughs> now that society is more aware of some of the tragic results of bullying, Hollywood has taken a step back in its portrayal of these characters. I'm gonna ask you guys to shake hands. Can you do that? Meanwhile, writers like Tina Fey have humanized bully archetypes using humor and honesty. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? Number seven, villainizing actual nations. Cowboy is chopping the Russian down. Many of the entries on this list avoid the nuances of real life, and this entry is no exception. I don't know how many Germans we're gonna kill. But we're gonna make an awful lot of noise. While Germany was one of the central figures in World War II, it would be more accurate to depict history on film by referring to the Nazi party, rather than the whole country as the culprits. No, no. Now especially, when you can access all of the world's knowledge on your cell phone, it's a lot less excusable to make mistakes like this. Americans are bad people. They will attack Russia. Many films fan the flames of racism and misinformed viewers. From every corner of Europe, hundreds, thousands would rise to take our places. 
Even Nazis can't kill that fast. Even classics like Casablanca and Dr. Strangelove are guilty of glossing over the more complicated aspects of international relations. All the Russians involved, sir. Henry, that's all I've been told. Number six, casual attitudes towards slavery. You got a good boy, trustworthy, obedient, whip smart. I sure hate to sell it. Slavery is undoubtedly one of the most regrettable aspects of American history, though some films seem to take it rather lightly. <laughs> In the mid-20th century, we were treated to several motion pictures that portrayed slaves as perfectly pleased with their situation, which we know is for the most part very untrue. Oh, sorry, Mr. Bates. The most infamous example of this is Disney's Song of the South, the inspiration for the Splash Mountain ride at Disneyland. My oh my. What a wonderful day. The movie was never released in its entirety on home video because the company was so embarrassed by the musical's portrayal of race relations. That really says it all. I'm just a wild old man what don't do nothing but tell stories. Number five, casual homophobia. I just need some ice girls. While we were tempted to include LGBT stereotypes on this list, they are unfortunately still occasionally seen in films today. We've just been having sex with each other all the time. And loads of sex. Gay crazy sex. Man on man. However, much less accepted today is blatant homophobia in films. At this moment, I have sunk as low as I can go. I was wrong. Long ago, it was relatively commonplace to see a gay character being used mostly for laughs. Oh, those guys are fags! <laughs> That's fantastic. Today, we wouldn't likely see certain insensitive slurs used in casual fashion, nor would we see a plot that involves a lesbian being turned straight. It means I'm a lesbian. But I gotta tell you, if I wasn't, I mean, after a first date like this, I find it really hard not to just get under the covers and do your big time right now. Some of the more destructive depictions of gay men involve them sexually assaulting or raping straight men, all in the name of comedy. Hilarious. Let's play dummy sticks. What's dummy sticks? I don't want to play dummy sticks. I don't want to play dummy sticks. Number four, rape is no big deal. Stan. Changed your mind. Remember in Revenge of the Nerds when Lewis pretends to be Stan so he can have sex with Betty? Yeah, that's rape. Ditto the scene in Sixteen Candles when Ted is left with a very intoxicated Carolyn. What happened? I have no idea. In fact, this kind of behavior was unfortunately non-controversial in 20th century films. What's worse is that oftentimes it was treated as a punchline. And the winner, of course, is named King of Sexual Awareness Week and is allowed to rape and pillage the neighboring towns until camp ends. True, sometimes a villainous character is initiating the sexual assault, but even so, it's usually brushed off after the matter. Dance, Tartar woman. Dance, Bert so George McFly hires Biff Tannen to work for him even though he once tried to rape his wife? Not buying it. I think you got the wrong car, McFly. <laughs> George, help me! Number three, non-ironic racial caricatures. Oh yes, and you is. You was going to eat every mouthful of this. Hattie McDaniel became the first African American to win an Oscar for her role as Mammy in 1939's Gone with the Wind. Oh, now, Miss Scarlett, you come on and be good and eat just a little. No! Honey. Unfortunately, the role she played was a black stereotype that would be considered offensive by today's standards. It was never easy for me. I was born a poor black child. This has been taken to a new level with white actors playing roles of different races, but we'll get to that later. In 30 seconds, I got to call the police! A crow in Dumbo named Jim Crow. Why, Jim? The Reverend Roden is gonna address you. An Asian in 16 Candles named Long Duck Dong. Oh, sexy girlfriend! Manzai! And whatever this is. Don't get me wrong, though. I have a great faith in the boy. Is it credit to your race? Let's be thankful for the progress we've made. You know what? He's crazy. Number two, casual violence against women. It's only five miles. Oh. 
It's a good stretch of the legs. During Hollywood's golden age, it was unfortunately common to show a male character striking a female character, usually to calm her supposed hysteria. <laughs> My father would be proud of you! Apparently, we only recently learned that hitting a female, A, would probably not be very helpful in calming her down, and B, is just not okay. Well, I can change that in a hurry. To add insult to injury, the man hitting the woman would sometimes be her love interest. Classic stars such as Glenn Ford, John Wayne, and even eventual President Ronald Reagan are guilty of this act. It was even featured on some posters for the 1946 film Gilda. That is definitely not something you'd see today, we hope. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Teach him, pale face brother, all about Red Man. Good. This should be most enlightening. Uh, what makes the Red Man red? It rubs the lotion on its skin, or else it gets the hose again. Number one, blackface, yellowface, brownface. Al Jolson and the jazz singer. How is that not racist to you? Okay. What? This is a terrible example of blackface. This guy isn't even trying to look like a real person. This one has a long and complicated history. Blackface is the practice which sees a white actor wearing makeup to appear black whereas yellow face is to appear Asian and brown face to appear Latino or Hispanic. Even some of the most highly acclaimed films of the 20th century used this trope, including Breakfast at Tiffany's, featuring Mickey Rooney as I.Y. Yunioshi, and The Jazz Singer, the first non-silent film. Where the sun shines deep, the sun shines wet, but I know where the sun shines best. A more recent example is Soul Man, which was widely criticized at its release. Mr. Watson. Right on. Robert Downey Jr. also famously used blackface in Tropic Thunder. Although that was more a satirical representation, it still generated some controversy. You want to step on a real landmine? You want to die? Huh? You want to get shot by a real mother? Oh. Keep looking ahead, man. Do you agree with our list? Terrific, that was terrific. What do you think is an outdated movie trope or trend? We're gonna supply one for $100. 100 doll hairs? It's a lot of doll hairs. For more retroactive top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. For 400 years, that word has kept us down.